Welcome to the overview of Architecture 331, 332, Architectural Structures 1 and 2. This is the first video of seven, and this video is going to focus on the course delivery and grading system. The professor is Wayne Place, the only phone number via which he can be reached is 919-760-7110. My email is wayne underscore place at ncsu.edu and my office is 212G Brooks Hall. We will be using the form on Moodle for most of our general purpose course related communications. Uh, more student specific communications, possibly of a more personal nature. Uh, can be handled using email, text messages, phone calls, Zoom, or in-person meetings. Every Tuesday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m., I will be available in 212G Brooks Hall for course-related matters. This course is part of a sequence. ARC 232 is a prerequisite to ARC 331, which is a prerequisite to ARC 332, which is a co-requisite to ARC 302. If you have not taken and passed ARC 232 or the equivalent, you cannot get credit for ARC 331. And furthermore, without having taken ARC 331, you are not eligible to enter ARC 332. Regrettably, I have given up trying to take equivalents of ARC 331 from other institutions. It simply doesn't work um, architecture structures courses are extremely variable across the country and to be honest our ARC 331 is unlike any other structures course that's taught in America and if you haven't taken ARC 331 you're not ready to take ARC 332. There are other prerequisites for optimal functioning in these courses the student should have a working knowledge of plane and solid geometry, a working knowledge of arithmetic. We will do a lot of arithmetic. We will not do any higher math. The student should have an introduction to trigonometry and vectors, basic skills in sketching, basic skills in doing scale drawings in a CAD program. And by the way, this does not mean Illustrator. It means a serious CAD program such as AutoCAD or some equivalent. Basic skills in fashioning scale models out of cardboard, wood, plastic, and or metals. We will use models as indicators of how structural behavior occurs in large scale buildings. And finally, a student should have a basic knowledge of computers, including word processing, spreadsheet, and CAD. The course delivery will be via Moodle on the North Carolina State University computer system. Videos will be provided. Approximately 130 of them are available on a wide range of topics. Also, data and support documents will be provided on Moodle. For example, there are tables for sizing steel beams or columns or sizing trusses and those tables will be made available um, over the course of both these semesters. There will be quizzes that will be open for a period of time and students will take them online. There will also be assignments which typically will be given on Moodle. Students will work their assignments and then upload the solutions on Moodle. Tests will be given on Moodle and finally discussions and communications will occur through Moodle. The textbook will be Architectural Structures. All students entering the course should have already acquired a laptop computer running Microsoft Word or equivalent, Microsoft Excel or equivalent, and AutoCAD or equivalent CAD software. In addition to the software above, a structural analysis program called MultiFrame will be used as part of the lecture videos and for one or two assignments. Multi-frame is available on the College of Design lab computers and can also be downloaded from an NCSU website 
onto the students' personal computers. The expectation is that students will spend approximately nine hours per week on this course. Some of the students are fairly strong in dealing with this kind of material and may get by with fewer hours. Some are not as strong in dealing with this kind of material and keeping up will require more than nine hours per week. My advice is don't start it with any preconceptions. Just get in there and do the work and figure out how to do the work. And don't sit and think, I have to have such and such done in X number of hours because that just puts uh, additional stress on you and accomplishes nothing. Quizzes will be scheduled approximately twice weekly. Assignments will be scheduled approximately once weekly. There will be four tests covering the four parts of the semester. Test 1 and Test 1 Retake will be on the subject matter covered in the first quarter of the semester. Test 2 and Test 2 Retake will be on the subject matter covered in the second quarter of the semester, and so forth. If you are satisfied with your grades on the four tests, you do not have to be present during the final exam period. During the final exam period, the following test retakes will be offered. Test 1 retake, which covers the first quarter of the semester. Test 2 retake, which covers the subject matter from the second quarter of the semester, and so forth. The final grade on a given subject matter will be the higher of the grade on the original test and the grade on the test retake. This will occur automatically in the grading process. Tests and test retakes will be administered at the Delta Testing Center. All students will get double time on all tests. In other words, the overwhelming majority of the students who properly studied the subject matter and properly prepared for the test will be expected to finish a test or makeup test in one hour. Two hours will be allocated for everyone on every test. If you miss a test during the course of the semester, for whatever reason you missed it, then your grade on that subject matter will be based on the corresponding test retake that is offered during the final exam period. You can think of that test retake as a makeup test. You do not have to bring an excuse for not taking a test. You just show up for the corresponding test retake during the final exam period. The test retake can only raise your grade, and there is absolutely no risk that in taking the test retake, you can lower your grade. Likewise, there is no risk in taking any of the tests during the course of the semester, since you can do poorly on them and still have the test retake as the basis for raising your grade. Many of you will be tempted to say, I don't feel prepared, so I'm not going to show up and take this test. That's a big mistake because it means you've missed an opportunity to establish a baseline grade and you might actually do better than you think and then it will spare you coming in during the final exam period. It's just generally prudent to not pass up a chance to establish that baseline grade by taking the tests when they are initially offered, even if you feel ill or ill-prepared. Calculators will be helpful in answering some questions in an efficient and timely manner. On tests, you will be given access to Excel, which is an excellent alternative to a scientific calculator. You will be allowed to bring a calculator to tests as long as it's a scientific calculator. You will also be allowed to bring your book to tests. It will be an open book, open Moodle test. Cell phones are not to be used in any manner during tests taken at the Delta Testing Center. Quizzes will be administered online during specific windows of time. Typically, the quiz will be available for at least a 24-hour window with no time limit within that window. The quiz will no longer be accessible when the window closes. Quizzes are intended to prod you to keep up, which is why they occur so frequently. Be prepared. Every time there's a day when you're supposed to be working, you 
look at the videos, and you take the quiz that's associated with it. There will be regular assignments involving design challenges, model building assignments, hand calculations, spreadsheet analyses, and computer simulations. You should stay on top of the assignments, which will help you follow the topics being presented, allow you to test your comprehension, and allow you to deepen your knowledge. Assignments can be done collaboratively. However, it is your duty to bring to the table your own ideas, insights, and critical judgments. The collaborative effort with your classmates is not intended to shortcut or diminish the learning experience, but rather to enhance it. Simply copying someone else's work without your own active and effective participation in the educational process is not acceptable. There exists a synergism between the assignments and the tests. You will have to work on your own on tests and tests will have many questions that draw directly on the understanding that you acquired from the assignments. Long assignment problems will not and cannot be repeated on tests because of the time limits. However, the essential understanding gleaned from the assignments will be tested. While taking the test, remember what you did on assignments so that questions related to assignment topics can be answered quickly and directly rather than being worked out from scratch. It is on these tests that you get a chance to demonstrate that you truly understood the lessons of the assignments and that you are not simply copying the work of someone else with whom you collaborated on the assignment. The standard credit for late assignments will be 50% off of whatever it would have been if, you had, if it had been on time. Assignments submitted more than a week late will not be accepted and will receive zero credit. Assignments submitted after solutions are posted will not be accepted. Sometimes solutions will be posted just a few days after the assignment was due. It is important to stay on track and meet the schedule for the assignments. The grading ranges are 90.00 to 100 is the A bracket, 80.00 to 89.99 is the B range, and so forth. Some of you come in from high schools where the, the passing range was 73 to 100, so Keep in mind for this course, it's 60 to 100, and the test questions are, are chosen in a way to make this a reasonable range. We'll have many technical resources for this course, including some absolutely amazing and wonderful documents, such as the Manual of Steel Construction from the American Institute of Steel Construction, the Design Manual of the Precast Pre-Stress Concrete Institute, the Design Manual of the Steel Joist Institute, the Design Manual of the Steel Decking Institute, Boise Cascade Design Data and Technical Publications for Engineered Wood, the National Design Specification for Wood Structural Design from the National Forest Products Association, and a host of other sources that have been integrated into the textbook and videos. You will not be expected to buy all these books. You couldn't afford it. Um, but also, we're not going to go through them in great depth. The videos and the textbook have drawn on these resources fairly extensively, and the things that you need to know are in those books. Um, relating this information about where this information came from out of proper respect to these institutions that generated them and to the thousands of human beings who worked for tens or hundreds of thousands of hours generating this data so that we can safely design buildings. The course schedule is available on the Moodle website. The course schedule is the nerve center for the courses. Check it often to make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. When you look at it, it'll look sort of like this. This is the first half 
of ARC 331. You'll notice that it's, it's laid out based on Tuesday and Thursday schedule. We don't actually hold classes on Tuesday and Thursday because it's an online course. And the videos are available throughout the semester for you to look at. But to keep a tempo, we have laid this out accordingly. So certain information is going to be presented on Tuesdays, certain information on Thursdays, or at least those are your days to focus on this material. And um, you'll notice here a list of Tuesday dates. Here's a list of Thursday dates. After every one of these, almost, there's a quiz. So after this first Thursday, there's a quiz, which will be due by noon on Friday the next day. Here's another quiz, which is due on Wednesday, the day after this Tuesday. Typically, this quiz will open up uh, at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, and you'll have until noon on Wednesday to work on it. Um, assignment 1 is also due on Wednesday and is listed here. And that Assignment 1, by the way, will be immediately available to you when you come online to the course. Everything in blue here is indicating a video. You'll notice a large number of videos right here. Um, these clearly can't be 50-minute uh, lectures because they're all corresponding to the subject matter for this one day. So typically there'll be enough videos here to constitute about 75 minutes of lecture material. Uh, these happen to be fairly short. For example, here's one that's 11 minutes and one that's 16 minutes. But typically, they will be on the order of 75 minutes of lecture material. And then there'll be a quiz to prod you to study that material carefully. And also assignments related to it to force you to follow up and understand it better. You'll notice here we have uh, a test one, which is for this designated date. That's the designated date, and on that day, there is no subject matter that's added. There are no videos that have to be looked at. There are no specific assignments for that day. That is the test day. Some of you may have health issues or other scheduling problems, and so this test will be opened up on Tuesday, Thursday morning. You can take it any time on Thursday during the Delta testing hours. You can take it on that Friday or the next Monday or the next Tuesday. Please understand, though, if you're going to take it on this Tuesday, there's new subject matter you're supposed to be looking at it that day. So if for some reason you've put off taking this test until that Tuesday, you need to figure out a way how you're going to schedule taking the test and also doing the work that's supposed to be done on that day. So here we have the first test and the second test. And then as we go down to the full schedule. So here we have ARC 331. This is the first half of the semester. This is the second half of the semester. This is test one, test two test three, and test four. In addition to these wide windows that occur for each of the tests, there is a five-day window during the final exam period during which students can take test one retake, test two retake, test three retake, and test four retake. Whichever one's they want in whatever sequence they want. So that's the 331 schedule. This is 332, which looks very similar, except to sort of divide the semester equally because of the, the um, different breakdown of um, holidays. Uh, this particular test 
is starts on a Tuesday. That's when the window opens up and it goes through Friday of that week. That ends our first video, uh, video one on the overview of ARC 331 and 332, uh, addressing the issue of course delivery and grading systems.